She was a woman from the town of Magdala, and she had some baggage. Boy, did she have baggage. Seven pieces of baggage to be exact, or to be more precise, seven demons. Mary Magdalene was a woman haunted by hell itself. The demons were nice and comfortable living inside Mary, taking over her body and mind. In other words, she was possessed. What caused this to happen? Was she an idol worshiper? A Satanist? Was she involved with witchcraft? Who knows? For all we know, they may have simply stormed the gates of Mary's heart, overpowering her will, conquering her spirit, and taking over her body. Or maybe they started with her mind, attacking the way terrorists do, kidnapping her soul and holding it hostage. Possession. It's an interesting word. We're not talking about things someone holds on to or owns here. We're talking about taking over completely. Demon possession is a nasty thing. It includes mental torture, deep agonizing frustration and confusion, as well as wicked thoughts, and emotional torment, horrible fears, nightmares, even while awake. Then there's the physical pain, self-mutilation, and lasting scars. All of this comes in the form of violent slavery and bondage, evil choices, and a vile vocabulary controlled by demonic forces. This woman, Mary from Magdala, she was tortured down to the deepest parts of her soul by a host of evil entities. She was a helpless, hopeless case. Until Jesus crossed her path. Then all hell broke loose, literally. As soon as the demons inside her spotted that carpenter from Nazareth, they knew who he was, and they knew they were going down. They were in the presence of the most powerful Son of God. Fear shot through them like lightning. They probably begged for mercy, trembling and stuttering like most cowardly, puny, weak demons do when face to face with God himself. Jesus probably only uttered one word, out, and they fled. And the woman from Magdala was free. She was free to live for herself, finally. She could do anything she wanted. No more demons controlling her. No more mental anguish or physical torture. She was free. So what would she do with this freedom? Would she fulfill all of her deepest desires from before demon possession? Would she get as far away from here, from her past, as possible? Or would she remain a slave, a servant, a servant of her Redeemer? Mary became one of Jesus' most devoted and passionate followers. She gave money to his ministry. She followed him as he taught. She provided comfort as nails were hammered into his body and he was hoisted up on the cross. Even in her mourning, a deep, anguishing sadness for the Redeemer who freed her from demonic possession, she prepared his body lovingly for burial. And she was the first at his tomb, the empty tomb, the tomb that proclaimed something much greater than freedom from demons, the tomb that proclaimed victory over death itself. She was there. Mary of Magdala, she was there.